have a roadmap for the way that God was specifically calling our family to live. What we were putting into our own marriage, our children are going to be formed in the faith. And God is giving you graces by letting you be and help and serve your whole family, especially if it's a big one. and this is Brobridge, Louisiana, and we're so glad you're here with us and you're catching me between errands. I am uh, just running a few errands today and uh, we're, we just, we're dropping off a banner at the bank uh, for the crawfish festival and you'll get to meet our daughter later, but she's the junior crawfish queen for the festival. And uh, so I just picked up a kid from school, brought him to the dentist, went grocery shopping. I have the baby and our four-year-old in the car and uh, I just need to check and see where Ryan is uh, and where everybody else is. Some kids are at school and uh, I'll let him know that you're here. Uh, so let me give him a ring. Hey. Oh, hey, Marios. So we have our friends from uh, Shalom World here and they're on their way to the house. Are you back yet from your, uh, your meeting in Baton Yes, I'll probably be back in around maybe five minutes or so. I'm, I'm on the way there. All right, take home about five minutes. Awesome. All right, well, we're on our way. Okay, bye. All right, so we're going to head back to our house. I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to uh, show you around a little bit and tell you a little bit about our, our culture here and our home here in Louisiana. So um, this is uh, Acadiana most Catholic city in the United States. So I'm an Acadian, uh, our, the home that our family, uh, the land that our family lives on has, was uh, given to us by the uh, colonial government back in the day when Louisiana was a colony. Um, the Acadians are in many ways political and, um, and sort of religious um, uh, refugees. They were persecuted uh, because of their faith, Catholic, deep Catholic faith uh, in what is now Nova Scotia. The, another interesting detail, this is the area that the Acadians came from, my ancestors came from in France, was seen as the most uh, swampiest, um, soggiest land uh, in, in France, and, and, and they drained it, and they made it really fertile, and then they left that area. The area that they went to in Nova Scotia was also um, the, the swampiest um, you know, land, the wettest land, the lowest land, uh, in that region and while they were there they drained it and made dikes and they and they made it's one of the most fertile land it's actually why the the british historically took it because they wanted this very fertile land and then you come to louisiana finally where we are today which a lot of people know is the bayou area a lot of swampy area and um and again they they drained it built it up and made it a very successful place so who knows providentially why God allowed it to be that way, but it is a, another interesting fact to share with you. Hi, welcome to our house. This is the Verrett family home. I am Mary Rose Verrett, and my husband Ryan Verrett is on his way here. Uh, but this land that we're standing on has been in my husband's mother's family since the 1760s. This was a Spanish land grant. So this land has been uh, under the rule of Spain, under the rule of France, and then uh, part of America. Over here we have the Witness to Love Retreat Center, uh, the Witness to Love office space uh, right next to our home. Uh, my mother lives half a mile that way. Ryan's parents live right at the beginning of our road. Uh, but this really is land completely surrounded by a family uh, and a beautiful place to raise our family and uh, to grow our ministry, Witness to Love, where we serve engaged and married couples. 
So uh, we, ha we have six kids and uh, there are two here at home with me and four at school right now. And my husband Ryan is about to pull up. So let's go inside. So we're just pulling up here uh, to our home here. We've been, we built this house um, 14 years ago, um, just a little bit after we got married. This was on land, my grandfather um, that I inherited from him after he passed away. It's my cousins and siblings around and family and grandmother and, and those, and a lot of extended family, but uh, grateful to have you and for you to get a little bit of a peek into our life and our family here. Ryan's coming. This is Ryan, and we're the Verrett family, and we have six kids. This is uh, Loic, and he's four. He's just waking up. Yes, and uh, so Ryan's just getting home from a meeting uh, in Baton Rouge, and you know our, our life is really very much a, a beautiful tangled mess of of ministry, of work, of, of the kids' school, of uh, just Sports, being sports family, being a part of an extended family, because uh, uh, you know just piano and all the different things, you know, so many activities that uh, most families are, are a part of. And uh, it's just to, to prioritize and to still keep God at the center and still keep sort of our, our family mission and our family charism, which is really hospitality and, and is our ministry, Witness to Love, uh, working with engaged and, and married couples. And so uh, really trying to focus on God being the king of our marriage and the king of our family. Let's continue the conversation. Would you like to come inside? We've been married uh, uh, just a little bit over 14 years now, and, and which is also a part of the work in apostolate and ministry we do called Witness to Love. Witness to Love really is uh, asking couples to open the doors to their domestic church, their their homes, and so really we're we're so happy to do that for you and to invite you into our home, into our domestic church. Uh, Witness to Love is all about couples witnessing God's love to the world, and so uh, really for us that charism has been hospitality, uh, inviting couples into our home, uh, ha having. Uh, spending time with other wonderful families, uh, many of whom are big. <laughs> and uh, it's it's a blessing. It's also uh, a challenge and it's not always neat. Sometimes it's a, a beautiful mess, but um, it is a gift and a blessing and uh, a grace. And, you know, Ryan comes from a family of four. I come from a family of eight. Um, but we didn't really have a roadmap for the way that God was specifically calling our family to live. Um, uh, really a, a witness model, a uh, hospitality model where we're, in, we're inviting other couples to walk with us, to journey with us. And that's really one of the most important things about family life is that God didn't give you your family just for you. He gave your, you your family to be really a light in the world, a witness, um, a joyful witness, and to bring other families who maybe haven't had that roadmap given to them. We're sharing with you some, some of the intimate stories about our life with you today. This is Zaylee. Zaylee's 13. She's our uh, avid reader and artist. This is Andre, almost 12, baseball player. Melody Rose, our junior conference queen and artist. She's nine, almost 10. And Mayel Therese, our gymnast, all around fun person. <laughs> and she's six. And then this is Jean Baptiste. He's four months old. And he's uh, named for John the Baptist. In a big family, we get to play with our sisters and brothers. Ow. And and on the slide, I play dominoes with my brothers and sisters. As 
really a lot of fun being here. My whole life until the baby came, I've been the middle child. And it's an opportunity to help them. Like sometimes if your older siblings are having a trouble um, getting cheered up, I can help them. What? because you have responsibilities, but you also get to watch your family grow. You get to see every little detail of their lives, like from when they're a baby to like when they get to their school age, and then over that, if you continue to be a guardian and stick with them. Even though we may be going through moments of like anxiety or fear or concern, you know, um, uh, the the reality for us in our experience was that God is a God of life and that He He, he gives life. Um, uh, is is it always easy? No. Is sacrifice um, this like uh, flowery thing that just makes us think of like pretty colors and everybody's smiling? No. I mean, the reality is that. Being a family today, a Catholic family in the in the world, trying to do it authentically in the way uh, we were modeled it is uh, it's a lot of work, right? <laughs> Mary Rose and I met in January 2007 in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. Where I was, I was up there for graduate school. I was studying clinical psychology. Ryan and I met uh, in Virginia. I was working for the Diocese of Arlington, Virginia. I was running marriage prep, theology on tap, and respect life, and working crazy hours and, and really working too much. I made a list of promises to you. I just had to write them down and say them out loud. And uh, the house I was living in um, had run, had, um, lost power, lost electricity. There was an ice storm. Two miles, really, walking distance down the road, two miles away, it was the church. And so power went off on a Friday. On Sunday, I go to the church for mass. I walk there through the snow. I'm not joking. I actually walk through the snow to church. I wasn't barefoot, but I walked to church. So instead of enduring a third night in the house that I was in with no electricity. We had burnt everything we possibly could in the fireplace. It was wet and damp. Can you imagine? Not having taken a shower or anything for three days. Um, I said, I'm gonna go to the church. I'm gonna spend the night in the cry room. It was 19 degrees, he was freezing, so he went to go sleep in the local church. I'm really like falling asleep in the, choir, in the uh, cry, uh, cry room and on the floor, and all of a sudden I wake up and there's two shiny shoes in my face uh, with a cassock. And I hear this, this priest saying, hey, what's going on down there? And he, so he looks at me and I said, Father, I'm just trying to sleep. And he says, nope, can't sleep in church. And so uh, Father was on his way to uh, my house for dinner. I, because I ran young adult ministry, there was always a lot of great young adult parties at our house. He said, well, I'm going to this little party with a lot of young Catholic your age in the area um, down the road. It's a baptism of the Lord party. It was right after Christmas. 
And he said, why don't you, why don't you come? So I go to this house. 10 priests and 60 young adults at our house with bonfires and music, and it was so fun, uh, really a very special time. Uh, but Ryan entered into that craziness. <laughs> and um, I, when I first met him, I thought he was homeless because Father texted me and said, hey, uh, MR, I found a guy sleeping in church, put another potato in the pot, um, I'm bringing him over for dinner. And I was horrified that Father was bringing a homeless guy to a house full of young ladies walking distance from where he found him. I walk in, and there was probably like 40 young adults from the D.C. area. Everybody, they were cooking, and people were having fun. But then I saw Mary Rose. Mary Rose was actually at the stove smashing potatoes, uh, boiling potatoes and smashing them to make homemade potato, uh, mashed potatoes. Of course, I later on found out Ryan was not homeless. He just had electricity. Um, but, and as we got to visit, and, and you know, I'd never really known anybody from Louisiana, and so uh, getting to know Ryan was something special. And you know, I wouldn't say we clicked right away. I mean, we, we got to be friends, and we enjoyed a lot of the same things. But at the time, I was supposed to be entering the convent, and he was uh, you know, dating someone here in Louisiana. So we were really just friends for about two years. But during that time, we realized how much we enjoyed the same things. Every time one of us would plan something with a bunch of other people, no one else would show up, just Ryan or just me. And it got to be the point where we just said, you know, we're just, we enjoy the same things, let's do stuff together. So we would, you know, bike to the Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington, D.C., or we'd go see a, a French film, or we would, you know, just all these things we enjoyed, go on a hike, and things we still enjoy. Uh, but that was, I think, the, that those two years of really beautiful friendship and enjoying the same things together was a, really a solid foundation. And then I guess it was around, um, uh, I left D.C. in July of uh, 2008. And then, um, yeah, so I met, and then um, I miss Mary Rose. And then Ryan uh, finished school in Virginia and he moved back to Louisiana. And I was uh, missing him a lot after he left, but I was, you know, just really convinced I wasn't gonna let missing him get the better of me and I really tried to move on. And he came back up for a wedding and we reconnected at a wedding for a friend that we went to and it was obvious there was definitely something. And so then he started calling uh, after that, you know, week after week. And finally I said, look, we're not dating. You're in Louisiana. I'm here. Like, we're not dating, so don't call me so much. So we, we were I uh, asked her uh, if she would date, and she said no, she wouldn't date. She said she only would um, kind of be in a relationship if there was an intention to discern marriage. I think I was protecting my heart, and uh, I hung up on him. <laughs> and a week later, he called me back, and he said, no, no, I, I, uh, I do want to talk about marriage, and uh, I want you to meet my family. Can I fly you down to Louisiana for Christmas to meet, meet my family? And I said, sure, I'll do that. And so I flew down, I met his family, and then on Christmas Eve, I flew to go uh, be with my mom for Christmas. But I, I realized, yes, I, I think I could be at home in Louisiana, and I think uh, I could imagine a life together. So that was really the beginning. In 2008, we were engaged. Um, and so that was the first, uh, first weekend of Advent that year. And then uh, we were married um, the following uh, Divine Mercy weekend, <laughs> you know, the Saturday after Easter in 2009, here in Louisiana. Uh, one of the most unique qualities and traits of Mary Rose is that her just, um, her, her innocence and her purity, she's always, she's always, she always approaches every, every instance of uh, and conflict or whatever it is with um, that, the, the best intentions. She's very maternal and she's very feminine, and it definitely complements my uh, uh, sort of assertive, probably more masculine, more kind of like, uh, you know, fatherly way, uh, kind of thinking outside, which she's thinking more inwards, And you, but you see that complementarity and a gift to grow, and so I, I would say um, that uh, her feminine genius in the way that John Paul II talked about, and also, I think also her willingness and her, her hard work to be uh, both a mother and a wife, and also to to dream big when it comes to like an apostle and a ministry, and for us to both be engaged in that because it's hard sometimes when both spouses are engaged in something. Uh, but you know, her commitment to like just making that work, um, uh, and also like in that it, it not leave anybody behind, right? Anybody in the family behind. 
I say the qualities that Ryan has that really are a special gift to our family uh, is his gift of loyalty um, and friendship. And uh, he doesn't kind of just take any friendship for granted. He really uh, invests in that friendship and nurtures that friendship and he writes handwritten notes. And uh, it's really just uh, a gift that he has to be present um, and to enjoy time together. And so uh, wherever he is, He's just, he's very present to that friendship and to that family. And because of that, he's still friends with people he went to uh, grade school with and college with, and uh, just all of those people have uh, been a beautiful part of our life. A lot of times you hear people say, well, I'm uh, I'm spiritual, but not religious. <laughs> and, um, you know, even family members and, and, and close friends. And, um, you know, our kids also hear that conversation. And when they're around people who don't believe in God or, you know, don't believe in Jesus and, and, and our kids just, can't, they have the conversation and, and they listen and you could just see the wheels turning in their head. And they said, you know, life, Life without God or Jesus is kind of like living in black and white. Like, why would anyone not want, like, the full life? And and you could just see, like, they just, they can't comprehend life without God. They can't comprehend life without without Jesus. Like, it, they, they, they can't even comprehend it. And to me, that's a beautiful thing. Like, you want your kids exposed to people who are from different faith backgrounds or no, no faith at all. Um, because you want them to kind of hear that. Now, you know, you want to have conversations with them about it, but it's important not to keep your kids in a total bubble. And we really do want to expose them to having those conversations and knowing not everyone has the same background as them. And so um, I think that's an important part of keeping God at the center of our families. You know, so if we have somebody come over and they don't have any faith background, we still say grace and we still do read the gospel and we still say our prayers and uh and people i think they really they they say wow your life suits you like i can see that you're happy i can see that you're joyful it's beautiful and they come back so that's another way of being a witness you know you're not you're not trying to make people like you you're just trying to introduce them to jesus and god can do the rest like we we can't uh control what god or the holy spirit does but we can open our door And uh, in, in opening our door, we can help other people open their hearts to God. The most important homily that our children will ever hear is our marriage. And so we come from a past like all of us, and we're not perfect, but there's so many examples that we can say, well, my parents did it that way, her parents did it this way, my grandparents, relatives, all those types of things. But, you know, we know that first and foremost, we wanted to kind of get get this right. And so, yeah, so I think God gave us, you know, a vision because we knew that um, what we were putting into our own marriage, our children are gonna be formed in the faith. We are the Verrettes, and, and we, we are, are joyfully gay! searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.